Hello my friends and welcome back to the state management series where I want to bring you closer different state management solutions. Today's topic is the new package from Felix Angelov, Qubit. I want to show you how you can use Qubit and how we can structure our app that we already created, the drinks app, in a way that we can use the Qubit application. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Qubit is a lightweight state management solution and is a subset of the block pattern. And with this, we don't rely on actions and we have plain functions to emit the new state. The Qubit package is actually a collection of different packages for Qubit, such as Qubit, Flutter Qubit, Hydrated Qubit, Replay Qubit, Qubit Test and Qubit Angular. And all of these packages have their own capabilities and functionalities that they bring into the game. The main package, Qubit itself, is used if you have a plain old Dart project and want to use the functionalities of Qubit state management. The second package on the list is Flutter Qubit. It includes all the information of the main Qubit package and also gives you additional functionalities with different kind of widgets. Additionally, it also includes like a pattern from the provider package, but we will talk about that later inside of the code. Hydrated Qubit is the third part of the list. It persists and restores data directly in a Hive database where you can get the data from and read it out after you have restarted your application. But my own personal favorite actually is the replay qubit package. It allows you to undo and redo certain states in your application. This is especially helpful if you have destructive methods like for example a delete and you want to get back the information that you had already. The last two packages, qubit test, should be pretty easy to understand, is to help you to test your qubit framework. And the last one is Qubit Angular, and Qubit Angular is for the Angular framework. This dividing to different packages were at the first glance for myself very intimidating. But on the other side, I understood that Felix did a very good job in divide and conquer the different parts, the different problems that he wanted to solve. For this, he created all the different packages, but kept it in one repository. So it is a fantastic solution and very good job there. And now, before we jump right into code, I have created a repository for you that you find down in the video description below. And inside of there, I created two branches. One of them is Qubit Solution, where you will find the final result of this project today. And one is Qubit Tutorial, where you get a lot of to-dos with a numeration so that you can follow along this tutorial way easier. So you should be able to solve all the problems and tasks that we will solve today by your own in the GitHub repository. So if you want to learn something, you can follow this video and try afterwards to solve the problem by the to-dos that I gave you. And if you get stuck, replay the video or check out the repository from Qubit Solution. Fantastic! Now that we have sorted that, please sit back, relax, and click on the like button and we jump right into the code. In order to get started today, I created us a bunch of to-dos that we can follow along that you will find if you go to the repository to Qubit Tutorials and then you can start up the project and find them under To-Do. As you can see, all the to-dos are here and numerated and declared as optional if you don't have to follow along with them. But you will learn all with all these to-do, you will learn all the insights of the Qubit framework. A perfect tool if you worked with Android Studio, you saw exactly how it works here. And in Android Visual Studio Code, you have to search for slash slash to do to find all the different parts of to do's. If you have a better solution for that, please let me know in the comments below. Now that we know how we find the to do's, we search for the first to do in our list, which is to do zero, which is living in the pubspec.yaml. That to do asks us to add the Flutter Qubit package in order to access it. For that, we go up in a browser of our choice, in our case, this one, and we will search for a package and this is Flutter Qubit. Here we go to the install tab and install the Flutter Qubit 010 or the version that you have at the moment. I would recommend you the highest possible version. And now we have to execute pub.get. Perfect. Now we have access to the package and can start to work. Now I'm searching for the next to do. Open up the to do tab. If you don't see that tab, you can also press Command Shift and A 
and search for to do. Now we go to to do number one. Here we can see we have to create a class drinks qubit and extend it with the qubit. Okay, so we create a class called drinks qubit and extend the class with a qubit. And this qubit will contain a list of different drinks. If you remember the set state course where I explained already how it works, we use exactly the same project. We can see that the initial state is a list of different drinks like water, Cuba Libre, Pina Colada and Havana Cola. And now we will use that information to work with our qubit. Our qubit will consist of a list of drink and this list of drink we will use in a second. Now we have to import the different packages, like the drink. For this qubit, it can't auto import it. For that, we have to manually import the qubit.dart from the package qubit. Now you can see that the drinks qubit is getting red. We can call the constructor here and you see it's calling the initial state which will get inside of this. But we don't want to have this actually, we just want to override the super. The super takes a state object which could be anything and we say it is a list of drinks. So our initialization will be the same list like in our set state example. So I will take this list here and bring it to our qubit list. Now we have initialized our first qubit with a list of drinks. And what you can see is with that we have solved already the to do number one and the to do number two. In order to solve that optional to do up here we can override the onTransition method. And the onTransition method will always be then called when the state is changing to a certain new state. And with that we can print the transition here and call for example the onTransition in qubit. Why I'm saying in qubit will be later important because we want to access that in two possible ways. This one is for the local state of this particular qubit and we will print the information here. So we can have a side effect whenever something changes of this qubit. But there is also another option that we will take a look into now. If we open up the to do, we can find the second optional which is here the qubit observer.dart. And in the qubit observable.dart we want to create a qubit observer. So to create our qubit observer we have to create a new class, which I call, for example, the main qubit observer and extend it by the qubit uh, observer. Also here we have the problem with the import that it auto import will not work or for me it doesn't work. So I manually import the qubit here. With that we have the qubit observer down here. In this qubit observer we have also an on transition method which also can print out the transition itself. So the transition is the new state that we get whenever we change the state of any qubit in that case. So this one is like a, a general watcher who gives us a callback whenever something changed, whenever any state changes inside of the qubit framework. We created an observer and extended, we did that and we overwrite the onTransition method. Perfect, so our observer is there. There's one last optional thing that we have to do. And this is we have to call into the qubit observer the new observer that we created. So we call qubit.observer. Now we have to import again. And inside of this qubit observer, we want to pass into the main qubit observer that we created and creating an instance of that. Now, whenever something changes in our qubit, we will see the information here. And because we have only one qubit, which actually also take a look onto how and what is changing, we have this on transition. That will mean we will get two prints whenever we change the state inside of this drinks qubit. But now let's get back to our to-dos. So we have the to-do number three. Use a qubit provider and create a drinks qubit. So let's have a look. It called already qubit provider and most of you will know this pattern from the uh, provider package. So we will have here a qubit provider which receives a child and has also a create function. If you are one of the people who know already the provider package, 
this will be very familiar to you. So we create our this drinks qubit and that's it. So now all children of this qubit provider will have access to this drinks qubit. And this familiarity with the provider package is no coincidence because the qubit package relies on the provider. That you can see if you want to have multiple providers registered that you have also a multi provider for the qubit framework. So also here you can create the same how you would do it with the provider package. If you don't know the provider package yet, I will create a video in the future for that. So don't worry, you will not miss that out. Fantastic. Now the third to do is done. Let's jump to the fourth. Use a qubit builder to get access to the current state. Here we are and we want to use a qubit builder. A qubit builder will always then call the, call the build of build function inside whenever the state of this qubit will change. So for that we import it and what we have to pass down, we have to give them the information which qubit it is and from which type the state will be. So it will be a, a drinks qubit and a list of drink. Now we have to import the drink object and pass down the required builder property. As you can see already, we get two parameters in this builder function. The first is a context and the second a state. And it needs to return a widget now. So we will take this column widget and put it here inside with a return statement. And what we can do is removing the child in that area. So all of this will be rebuilt whenever the state of list drink will change. So we can remove that and now this state is currently referencing to this state. So we can remove the elements up here and we can also change this here to a state less widget. With this in place, we come in becoming two errors because the selected drinks was a method which gives us just a subset of the selected drinks. To get the subset of the selected drinks, where we just check against the elements uh, if they are, are selected. We can go into the item builder, creating a new variable, selected drinks, and calling now the state that we receive thanks to our builder function. And inside of this state, we search for the elements that are selected. If you don't know how this where method works, Machtab already created a video of how the where method works. You will find the link up in the info box. Now inside of to do 5 we just don't have to do anything anymore. As you can see, it directly works. Same thing should be for this part. But unfortunately, the item builder doesn't surround the item count. So we have to lift this element up. And we put that inside of the builder function of the qubit builder. And voila, you can see both are green and we will get the result now here. But unfortunately, until now, we don't change the state at all. So let's have a look into our to-dos, what we have to do. The sixth thing is that we have to write a method inside a drinks qubit that selects a drink. That will be here. So what we have to do is writing a method called selecting a drink. For that we pass down a void select drink. And what we want to do is pass down a drink and a boolean if it is selected. And after that, what we have to do is we have to transform the state from this qubit. The good thing is inside of every method inside of the drinks qubit, you have this access to the state, which is a list of drinks. So this one, just keep in mind, this state object should be an immutable and should not be changed by us. So what I will do is I will create a new variable like selected drinks. And what I will do is pass inside the state with the spread operator to create a new object from the current state. Now I'm looking for the first drink that has the same name like the drink inside of these selected drinks. So first where element dot name is equal to the drink dot name. And now with that we have the drink that we want to change. Now we will change the selected drink selection to the selected variable. And now, because the state has changed and we have here a immutable object, we have to inform the qubit that we have to emit a new state. And in our case, the new state will be selected drinks, which has our changed state. Because the hash reference of these two lists are now not identical, it will rebuild all our builder functions that we have inside of our widget tree. 
So if we take a look into the qubit screen, that would mean that this qubit builder builder function, so this part here, is getting re-triggered whenever we emit a new state. And inside of this onChanged method here in to do 7, we have now to execute this method. For that, we will access the context dot qubit. And for this qubit, we have to pass down which qubit it is that we want to access. So we have to inform it that we want to have a drinks qubit. And here we can now execute our selected drink with the drink that we pass here inside the drinks widget and the selection that is the value of the onChanged method. And with that, we execute now everything and properly. So if we show into our emulator, which I'm opening up here, and I'm clicking now on one of these checkboxes, you will see the change state is happening. We change our information and with that we have our state collaborated. If we take a look into our run part, you can see there is a lot of going on. So I will clear that one again and we select one element. And as you can see, we get two informations here. On transition in qubit, transition and general watcher, which is that part. And as you can see, is also the uh, row of the order. So first, this on transition method will be called on transition in qubit. And after that, our observer will have the second part. In this example, I did not use yet the, the qubit listener. So I want to just give you a hint that this one exists. The qubit listener takes down two parameters. First, a child, which I will do with a container, and the second parameter, a listener. But as you see, there is also an optional qubit possibility and a listener when, so you can also add some, some conditions. In the listener, we will get the context and the state. And with this, we can now work further to activate side effects. This should be only used for functionality that needs to occur once per state, like navigation or transitions. We can show a snack bar, dialogues, making a navigation or transitions. So this gives us the opportunity to react on different parts when the state has changed and is also a fantastic addition to the library. As you can see, we got an error in our application. This is because we have to add to our qubit listener the qubit itself, drinks qubit, and the state that will, it will get, a list of drink. And we open up the emulator again. You can see everything is working. And if we take a look into this one where we execute the state, we can now see in our print functionality, as soon as we select something, that the listener is also reacting on this state. Perfect, that's it for today. We learned how to implement the Qubit package and how we can work with it. We learned about Qubit Builder, Qubit Provider and also Qubit Listener. These are the essentials to get started with the Qubit package and to learn more with the state management of Qubit. So I hope you could learn something today and if you did, please consider to give this video a like which would help us and also our channel and if you are new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me today. Until the next time, enjoy the rest of your day.